Tuesday night at the U.S. Consulate in Benghazi, a complex and highly dangerous situation. Outside, an anti-American protest. Then, a group of heavily armed militants, approximately two dozen of them, launched an attack firing rocket-propelled grenades. The attack in, in Libya is, appears to be a very coordinated military-style attack. This was not a, a demonstration gone bad. This was a clear, targeted, planned event. It could have been a complex, organ organized operation to take out U.S. officials with an Al-Qaeda link. Uh, looked at very hard, the video that we have uh, seen uh, this week coming from Ayman al-Zawahiri, the Al-Qaeda number one, who was citing that the Al-Qaeda number two was killed by the U.S. and called on people to take action. That might have been the motivator for Al-Qaeda elements in Libya. A complex and fluid situation, guys. Back to you. It turns out 9-11, this year's 9-11, was a very bad day for the U.S. overseas. Just hours apart, protesters in Cairo scaled the wall and stormed the U.S. Embassy and destroyed the American flag in Cairo in Egypt. And then in Benghazi in Libya, a more concerted and fatal attack on the U.S. consulate. Jamana, what are you hearing about the latest reports that this was a planned attack? Well, Zane, it did seem initially, like you said, uh, 24 hours ago when this story broke, it was uh, reported uh, by eyewitnesses in Benghazi that uh, the attackers there were saying that they were there uh, to protest. Uh, but all indications today, and we are hearing this from senior uh, Libyan government officials in a press conference today, uh, the Speaker of the Libyan Parliament did say uh, that it coincided, this attack coincided with the September 11th anniversary, and it does seem that this was carried out uh, by groups, he said, that are using Libya to stage what he described as revenge attacks against the West, uh, saying that Libya Libya will not allow this to happen. Uh, while these strong words are coming from the Libyan government saying, saying that they will not allow this to happen, this is not an isolated incident. We have seen over recent months uh, attack after attack taking place in and around the city of Benghazi targeting uh, foreign interests there. The U.S. consulate, that same very building, uh, a bomb detonated right outside that building back in June. A few days later, uh, the convoy of the British ambassador also targeted in Benghazi. These attacks uh, claimed uh, by Jihadi groups uh, operating there in the eastern uh, part of the country. Uh, Libya saying today, the officials speaking today saying uh, that they will need the help of the international community in dealing with these groups. Well, there are now numerous reports suggesting this may have been a planned attack linked to somebody, most likely Al-Qaeda in Libya. Intelligence experts point out the attacks occurred just after the terror group's leader called for militants to seek revenge. If this was a revenge attack, and if there was any state involvement, then what? Well, then uh, the United States will have to deal accordingly. In, in a vacuum, thousands of miles away, Senator Nelson, would you agree that it seems outside the realm of possibility? that on the same day that the United States was attacked by Al-Qaeda, the same day that somebody released a video saying, yeah, you killed our guy, and we sh that they would be able to, 20 guys with an RPG, be able to get to our embassy and assassinate our ambassador? Well, we don't know the answer to that, but that is certainly a coincidence that needs to be explored. Or it is possible, since the video had been uh, obviously uh, filmed uh, some time before that this was all coordinated with the Al-Qaeda operatives we'll have to see as it comes out these guys are fairly good planners and they love to have this kind of revenge stuff that's going on two attacks on US diplomatic buildings one here in Cairo spontaneous impassioned and harmless the other in Benghazi, focused and deadly. At 4 p.m., protesters in Cairo answer a preacher's call on TV to go to the U.S. Embassy to denounce an Internet video made in the U.S. that insults Islam. Rumor is the video they call a movie is about to premiere. They want to stop it. By 6 p.m., protesters scale the embassy's outer walls and rip down a U.S. flag. No one is hurt, but Egyptian police are noticeably slow to arrive. 
Around 10 p.m. in Libya, militants attack the U.S. consulate in Benghazi. Using RPGs and grenades, mortars, and military tactics, they set the consulate on fire. Witnesses tell a Reuters correspondent in Benghazi that it had been peaceful until the militants showed up. And the, the protest was supposed to have been a quiet, a simple, peaceful one. But um, people started uh, shooting at some point. Some people got injured uh, from the Libyan side and then literally all hell broke loose. And over the next five hours, until nearly dawn, U.S. and Libyan security personnel inside the consulate battled the militants, building to building. Four Americans, including the ambassador, are killed. Was this the act of a spontaneous mob, or was it pre-planned, a 9-11 anniversary attack? And did the militants know the U.S. ambassador was in Benghazi? Was he the target? U.S. officials say the Benghazi attack was too sophisticated to have been entirely spontaneous. The new report in this, morning cla this morning claims the White, House, the White House had credible information on the attack 48 hours in advance. That according to an in uh, a newspaper in London called The Independent. Well, here is what that independent quote says. According to senior diplomatic sources, the U.S. State Department had credible information 48 hours before mobs charged the consulate in Benghazi and the embassy in Cairo that American missions may be targeted, but no warnings were given for diplomats to go on high alert and lockdown, under which movement is severely restricted. Now about this movie, this anti-Islam film that has sparked so much outrage in the Middle East, as we've seen after showing up on the Internet. It's now been taken down from YouTube in Egypt and some other places, and NBC News has decided not to show any of it on the air. The actors in the film say it was all shot in a studio in Southern California, and they say they have no idea what they were getting into. Our report from our L.A. Bureau tonight and NBC's Mike Taibbi. According to the casting call last summer, it was supposed to be an historical Arabian desert adventure film. But when actress Cindy Lee Garcia saw the crude 14-minute video trailer that led to such lethal anger in the Arab world, she was horrified. The video that came out of the studio east of Los Angeles was no mere adventure story. In fact, two actors and the assistant director on the film told NBC News the original spoken lines from the screenplay were later dubbed over without their knowledge. Were later dubbed over without their knowledge. Were later dubbed over without their knowledge. The result, at least in the trailer, is a relentless barrage of insults and accusations against Islam's customs and against its prophet Muhammad. Exactly 19 years ago today, it all seemed so hopeful when Bill Clinton promised the people of the Middle East a quiet miracle of a normal life. As they now grapple with a new world order. The new world order. The new world order. The president and his secretary of state are insisting that the U.S. has no connection to that anti-Muslim video. It appears to have a deeply cynical purpose to denigrate and to provoke rage. And to provoke rage. And to provoke rage. This is the dark side, Brian, of the entire Arab Spring movement, which empowered many people looking for democracy, but also unleashed a great many radicals without the strongmen keeping in check. And there could be more incidents like this, Brian, in the days, months, and even years to come. All right, Richard Engel starting off our coverage from our bureau in Cairo tonight. Richard, thanks. have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations for the rule of law not the law of the jungle governs the conduct of nations when we are successful and we will be and we will be we will be we have a, we have a real chance at this new world order a real chance our world an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the U.N.'s founders. <laughs>